This is a success story with benefits for everyone involved and especially for the people of Ontario. This site, Wawate, an Ojibwe word that includes the meaning the maker of light, is a tangible symbol of what we can do together. I strongly believe it could be an example, a challenge for all of us because there's little doubt that we do need logical, responsible and viable sources of energy in our province. And what better way than renewable energy from a source that is environmentally sound from which we can all benefit. We're standing below a river that's 160 feet high and that uh, pressure is behind these yellow butterfly valves. When the Premier pushes the start button, the butterfly valve starts an operation and it opens. The pressurized water then fills this scroll case. We'll allow the scroll case, which is the snail effect here, once it's filled and pressurized, we'll open up the butterfly valves that actually control the water to the turbine. And you'll, you'll see nature in motion. So it, it, think of it as a water, a, a water engine, an engine that runs on water. When I uh, looked at the site after a number of trips, decided on a development strategy, it was actually uh, Camille that had asked me, how, how is this going to look? And I said, uh, well, let me show you. So I drew it out in the sand, and Camille tells me it's very close to what I showed him. They draw it in the sand, and there I see everything what was going to happen. And when I look at the site now, exactly the way they made it, it was printed in the sand. Con West, an oil, gas, and mining company, has established itself as a leader in the private hydropower industry in Canada by carving the Wawate Generating Station out of the wilderness of northwestern Ontario. A new road and bridge had to be built to reach the site five kilometers off the Trans-Canada Highway. The site is about 16 kilometers from the Pick Heron Bay First Nation and the town of Marathon. Con West, working in close cooperation with local contractors, the Pick Heron Bay First Nation, the Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources, and Ontario Hydro, has harnessed the power of the Black River. The Wawate Generating Station will produce 13.5 megawatts of electricity for Ontario Hydro's grid. That's enough electricity to serve a town of 7,000 people. I can remember the first time I came here, which was less than two years ago, and we walked up the one side of the gorge and down the other side of the gorge, and it was hard for, for me to visualize just how this is all going to come together. A project such as Wawate requires a developer to bring to the table a wide variety of skills to complete a difficult and complex development process. The large number of regulatory approvals required on such a project demand a thorough analysis of development options. Hard-working technical people with high levels of experience are necessary to conduct all necessary investigations and complete a development plan. Most importantly, during the construction phase, substantial seed capital and risk capital are required. Projects like this do not just happen. They require imagination, planning, applied knowledge and skills, project management, and teamwork. The people and organizations that are part of the team that brought us to this day should be very, very proud of their achievements. Conwest, the Pick River First Nation, and all of the other people from government, utilities, and the private sector. The Wawate Generating Station was dedicated by Martin Connell, the chairman of the board of Conwest, on June 23rd, 1992. Ontario Hydro has a new long-term source of power. The Pick First Nation has an interest in the profits of this venture, which will provide a new and long-term sustainable source of revenue. The province of Ontario has a new private sector enterprise in the north, 
which has already provided new jobs during a very difficult economic period. And there will be a generation of profits and revenues for this province well into the next century. The Black River winds across bush country, crosses the Trans-Canada Highway, then gathers itself up and drops into Lake Superior, quite close to the lake. The potential for power development at the site was recognized long ago by Ontario Paper. A power site was operating at the gorge from the late 30s until the early 60s. In the summer of 1988, the Ministry of Natural Resources called for proposals to develop the site. From the 14 proposals submitted, the Bagetakong Power Corporation was the successful bidder. Bagetakong was formed by private hydro developer David Carter and the Pickheron Bay First Nation. A business relationship was eventually established between Bagetakong and the hydropower division of Con West. We had social experts, social scientists on the selection committee, we had engineers on the selection committee, and we had biologists on the selection committee. And each of those different groups had their own criteria and their own things that they were looking for and, and a marking scheme and then we would roll that in together. So the proponents came forward, they made their presentations, we examined them under those three headings and, uh, and the group that won was uh, Chief Roy Machano and, and the Pickheron Bay Band and their partners who became Con, Con West. <laughs> The relationship with, with, with Con West was excellent. Uh, you know, they were up front with us. We were up front with them. Uh, there was nothing hidden, uh, very clearly. Uh, you know, they've been good corporate people. We enjoyed working with them. John Lamacraft, the president and chief executive officer of Con West, says the relationship with the band is a model for future projects. Most small hydro projects in the north represent an ideal opportunity for First Nations people to get involved in a resource development right in their own backyard. Con West recognizes that involving First Nations people throughout the process is a key ingredient for success. We are uh, looking at uh, development of hydraulic sites generally, but uh, particularly those where First Nations have a stake in the, uh, in the outcome. A project like this will uh, We'll make room for it. Ontario Hydro is committed to establishing independent power production as an essential part of its energy supply, with particular emphasis being placed on the development of hydroelectric and renewable resource projects to meet future supply demands. Certainly, as we look at new sources of power for the future, this is going to be a very, a very important element in the whole picture. Over $10 million was injected into the Northern Ontario economy during construction of the Wawate Generating Station. Northern Ontario firms such as Gooseneck Construction from Heron Bay, Graham Mining from Manitouage, Grant Development from New Liskard, Carmen Construction from Sudbury, and a host of local suppliers were involved in the project. These projects also provide substantial ongoing benefits to the local and provincial economy. This project will generate $50 million in water rentals and municipal levies alone over the contract life. It's not only the economy, but also the environment that has benefited from the Wawate Generating Station. Paul Dennis, a conservation officer with the Ministry of Natural Resources, was one of the Ontario government officials that monitored the project during design and construction. I'm very optimistic that what we have jointly developed here will be something that was better. Um, there aren't too many projects that uh, can be undertaken in this day and age that you might actually get a net gain. But I think we've achieved that here in that a lot of time was spent in the development of this tail race. This tail race has been uh, specifically designed to uh, provide what we hope will be spawning facilities for a wide range of uh, fish that frequent the area. Construction of the Wawate Generating Station was achieved in record time. Dedicated contractors and subcontractors worked day and night, often in frigid temperatures. Graham Construction tunneled through over 500 meters of Canadian Shield in just four months, working seven days a week, 
22 hours a day under the guidance of Strathcona Mineral Services, a well-known Toronto-based mining consulting company. Approximately 20,000 cubic meters of rock and overburden were removed to allow the placement of an intake structure over four stories high. This intake structure was specifically designed to minimize the intake velocity of water. This maximizes hydraulic potential and minimizes environmental impact. Approximately 200,000 cubic meters of rock and overburden were excavated for the powerhouse and tail race area. The powerhouse was designed with innovations to save money, be extremely functional, and at the same time look like it belongs in a national park. Brian Robin, the manager of engineering for Conwest Hydropower Division, worked with North Shore Environmental Services to develop a unique design for the tail race area. In a commitment to enhance the environment, the tail race incorporates artificial spawning grounds and a nursery area for young fish. Three twin Francis turbines were installed that can operate over a wide range of flows, from 2.5 cubic meters per second to 34.5 cubic meters per second. The option to add a fourth turbine later on when economics warrant was built in. State-of-the-art technology was used throughout. The entire operation is completely automated. Conwest has qualified operational personnel coordinating the Dryden and Wawate facilities with Ontario Hydro's Northwestern Grid. Conwest used expertise it acquired from the purchase of Sunridge Power Corporation in the Dryden area, one of the first private power initiatives in Ontario. Sunridge interconnected to Ontario Hydro's grid seven years ago. The plants have an average age of 50 years. Given today's operating experience, these utility-grade facilities have only achieved half their life. Traditionally, hydro generating power has been a very clean source of power. Uh, if you look at the, the origins of hydro, Ontario Hydro, of course, comes from Niagara Falls. And there, what we're doing, interestingly enough, is we're putting new turbines into the system, which will generate even more power from the same, uh, from the same waterfall. But here, where there's no dam involved, there's no backup, there's no flooding involved. In fact, we've created a better fish habitat, and some I'm told, by some people who've been fishing in the pond there. So we've, uh, we, we've really tried to do it all right. And I, I think that the, uh, the company here deserves to be congratulated. They've really done a remarkable job. We'd like to think this is a signature for our future projects. You can see the extra care and attention that's gone into the detail here. We've tried to make this look like a park, and I think we've succeeded. This has been a, 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 a wonderful success story. Things have been very positive. Uh, from an environmental point of view, uh, the company and the natives have worked uh, with our uh, scientists, our fisheries people, and so on. The company has been uh, a model employer an employment equity employer. They have been a, a, a model negotiator with uh, the native community here and with the, uh, the First Nations people uh, here along the river. They have done a great service to all of us in providing leadership. The hydroelectric business seemed to be a logical extension of Conwest's existing energy business. And there are many, many similarities between hydro, and oil and gas, and mining, but there's one key difference. And that is, whereas in mining, the mine eventually runs out, the ore body depletes, you're left with nothing. The oil well eventually runs dry, but the river runs forever. 